Hi, my name is Amanda Hopeyans, and I am doing my presentation over George Caleb Bingham. When we were given this assignment, I first started searching for an artist by looking through Old Biz Gallery. When looking through that gallery, I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted in an artist to do research over. I wanted an artist that had a lot of landscape paintings in his or her collection because that's always been something I've been interested in. I like to take photographs of landscape and love to be outdoors and view the scenery. I also wanted to find an artist that had a large collection so I'd have plenty of works of art to look from and not just be loaded to a few numbers of projects. I also wanted to look for an artist that had variety. I didn't want to do research for an artist that was only known for one thing. That way I would have more to talk about and I'd have more to learn also. And I also wanted to look for an artist that had an easy name for me to pronounce. I know looking through Olga's gallery, there were quite a few that had names that I would have no idea on how to pronounce. So I figured I would be pretty safe with George Caleb Bingham. This is my poster for my presentation of George Caleb Bingham. In the middle of the poster, I have a couple of banners that have some phrases on them for things he was known for or known as. He was known as the Missouri artist and Missouri's first artist, and he was also known for his portraits and his genre scene paintings of life on the frontier. On the bottom of the poster, I have a timeline of some significant events from his life, and I will just bring that closer so that you can see them. I'm going to start off talking about George Caleb Bingham's background. He was born in 1811 in Virginia and in 1819 moved to Missouri with his family and siblings. There he lived on his family farm and helped out around the house with his mother and his father and his siblings. And according to my source by Fred R. Klein, Chester Harding came to Missouri to do a painting, a portrait of Daniel Boone and George's father knew that he had a knack for painting and decided that he would try to get Chester to let George help him out, kind of be his apprentice or his assistant. Harding was actually staying at the family inn so this made it very convenient for George's father to say something to him about George and George ended up helping out with the portrait of Daniel Boone and Harding could tell that George had something. He had something special and in fact gave George a set of brushes and told him to try to paint portraits, to try to go out and paint portraits of family members and of friends and of neighbors and to get started because he knew that George had a special talent and didn't want it to be wasted. George started out by traveling around and doing portraits of his friends and family and began to use portraits as a way to make a living. He traveled around and earned money for his portraits and everyone wanted him to do their portrait because he did such an astounding job. And after doing portraits for quite a while, George got interested in genre painting and began painting images of the frontier life and of things that he saw every day by living in Missouri, of people on boats, fur traders, and just the general everyday life and work that went on with living in the frontier in Missouri. George was also a politician in Missouri Although this didn't last very long, he came back after visiting Europe for a while with his second wife and daughter and began painting frontier life photo pictures again. 
George also became the first professor of art at the University of Missouri and later died in 1879, still in his home state of Missouri. This is order number 11, the picture that I will be talking about. This is in George Caleb Bingham, Missouri's famed painter and forgotten politician. And as you can see, when looking at this photograph of this picture, you can see that it's kind of split up into two sections. You've got the section where all of the people are leaving and moving out with all of their belongings. You've got the children, the families, the pets, and the slaves all leaving the area. And then you also have the section of a man who has been shot by a soldier. You have his wife laying on the ground, covering his body, weeping and remorsing for her husband's loss. And you have the gentleman's daughter pleading to the soldier to not shoot again, to not shoot, who I believe is the grandfather, who you can see is protesting against what the soldier has done. And also, the gentleman who was shot, his mother is fainted, passed out in a slave's arms. And in the background, you can see all of the farms which are on fire and being burnt by the soldiers, as this is all part of martial law or order number 11 that was put into place by Thomas Ewing. Pamela D. Toller stated in her source that George Caleb Bingham actually said that order number 11 depicted the evils sure to result if martial law was allowed to prevail and that he would make Thomas Ewing infamous with pen and brush as far as I am able. This goes to show us that he did not agree with the things that were happening in his home state and he did not agree with the way that Thomas was treating his friends, his family, the people of Missouri by burning their homesteads, burning their farms and therefore went to canvas and paint and put this masterpiece together, something he would always be known for. Critics look at this painting as one of the paintings that George Caleb Bingham is most remembered by, but not one of his best paintings. They actually go on to say that the painting looks like it has been done with a clenched hand and this was in my source by Paul Nagel. And they say this because in a lot of his portraits, he had smooth lines and a flow about his paintings. And this one is so harsh and to the point, really. He was just trying to get a message across. And I feel like I would have had the same feelings. I would have tried to do anything I could to go out and make this stop that I would try to get the word out, which George did by going around with this painting and trying to tell everyone what was happening in Missouri and what Thomas was doing. That way he could keep him out of office and out of a role of power and that he could make it stop. And I feel like all of the detail that he put into this painting really allows for you to get the full story from it, to allow to you to really see what is happening and to focus on what exactly people in Missouri were going through at that time. I think that the fact that George was self-taught, that he had many roles, he was a painter, a politician, a father, a husband, a professor, and could still produce these beautiful paintings and things that would tell stories for ages and ages and ages to come, that he truly does deserve the title of the Missouri artist and Missouri's first artist.